Good afternoon, everyone, to spe Session Spotlight. It's our last one. It's hard to believe. Um, today, we have Kyla Crawford, Susan Lazier, Kathy Moynihan, Angela Schneider, and Robin Spady. How's that for a lineup? Uh, we want to welcome you all and invite you to come join us to Convergence 2024. It's our Fiber Art Conference. It will be July the 11th through the 17th in Wichita, Kansas. We have a full lineup of activities that you will enjoy. There's shopping at the marketplace. We have a variety of exhibits uh, and the runway fashion show. That's usually the highlight of the week. We have keynote tours and so much more. We're going to talk to some of our leaders today. We're going to start with Kyla Crawford. Kyla's doing Paper into Yarn. This is a three-hour seminar. It is Saturday afternoon, July the 13th. Hi, Kyla. Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome. All right. So I, um, totally brain fart now. I am teaching uh, paper spinning and I got into paper spinning during grad school where I was interested in how could I take a drawing and turn it into a uh, line. And uh, let me show you some of my works here. So, um, and I was also interested in how can I play with techniques that I understood and push them a bit further in new ways for me. This technique has been around for centuries, especially in Japan. Um, and it was a way to use material as, uh, and reuse material as well. So um, with these pieces, I take drawings that have hopes and dreams and um, also these like imaginary creatures that I want to exist in the world and liked, uh, and I imagine them existing in a different dimension. And then it's like, how can I bring them into our dimension? I know I'll spin yarn like the fates and bring it into our world. Um, and then I've also started thinking about mythology and the fates I've started weaving a bit more with these uh, papers, so uh, <laughs> to further cement them into our reality, and also thinking about yarn as potential. Um, and unused yarn as this um, energy waiting to be actualized and potential waiting to be actualized. So I, um, let me see if I've got the video, yeah. So um, just a fun little quick video of it being twisted on the loom or wheel. So yeah, uh, for me, this came from a fine art point of view and um, trying to mesh my um, fiber art, love of fiber arts in with my love of fine art and communicating through visual means. So I went through that super fast. Let me go back up here. <laughs> um, so can you <clears throat> say that yes. again? This is fascinating. I This class is not what I expected. So you're going right. to, so there's in meaning the class, behind be the drawing. paper, right? There's meaning behind the paper. There is meaning behind the paper. And wow. I will be having my um, students draw and write meanings and like maybe their hopes and dreams that they want to like actualize and, and kind of uh, that idea of like the secret where you're like, okay, I want this thing to happen and you think about it, but that action of like having it on your the back of your mind helps you helps motivate you to starting the actions that it creates so like uh when my husband was laid off with covid and recently he was looking for a new job so i made him some like job yard <laughs> to like hopefully to help him like he he was already putting in the work but it's just like here's some work that it's almost like a prayer um that just like I know I can't necessarily do things for him but it's like here's something that I feel like I can help you and with this like thing 
and making it uh, actual. Like also you're taking something that's nebulous and like thought is very nebulous. So you're taking these thoughts and making it into a physical thing, which I find very like therapeutic and um, helps give you some control <laughs> over the world. So yeah, people will be writing their hopes and dreams and then we'll be playing the fates and turning it into yarn. And I'll be teaching them a, uh, I'll be teaching you all a variation on the traditional Shifu. I couldn't get it, the technique right myself, learning just from online and trying to figure it out through reading. So I'm like, well, this is, this step is doing this thing. Let me figure out another way. So I have like just kind of a workaround <laughs> that's non-traditional. Oh, yeah. Well, this is almost like a twofold workshop. One, you're going to learn how to spin paper, which I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. But then there's the whole uh, meaning and, and um, symbolic side to it. So this sounds wonderful. Thank you, Kyla. Thank you. Kyla Crawford's going to be teaching paper into yarn. It's a three-hour seminar, and it's Saturday afternoon, July the 13th. Next up, we have Susan Lazier, Sustain Sustainable and Creative Garments with a Pieced Approach. This is a 90-minute seminar, and it is Thursday afternoon. Hello, Susan. Hi there. So I actually do, I will put up a PowerPoint because it's just so much easier to explain what we'll be doing in this 90-minute uh, lecture. So let me just share and just please confirm that it fills the screen. There you go. You look good. Okay. All right, so uh, let me get this going with me. So what we're, what am I calling a pieced approach? This, what I mean by pieced approach is you're building garments with more than one fabric. And um, it's a great way to use up small bits, leftovers. Uh, and, but as part of the process, you need to curate which fabrics you want to put together and then create divisions um, to figure out the best way to get the best proportions, et cetera, in the doing of it. So there's many advantages to doing this. A lot of it is creativity, um, using up your stash, push, um, pushing yourself forward, maybe building a more versatile wardrobe. Um, we'll be talking about the creative process, the types of patterns to look for that make this uh, easier to execute, uh, finding inspiration in shapes, uh, planning your fabric mixes. Um, for example, these are some linen shibori fabrics that I created um, in dyeing. And so I did like 18, 12 by 18 inch pieces, but now I have a collection of them that need to go together in a garment. So this is a good starting point. Uh, I also have collections, you know, I'm a sampler. I love to experiment. So I also did uh, Printing with found objects like bubble wrap and corn, you know, corn on the cob and all kinds of things. So I had a collection of fabrics and then I needed to figure out how to get them into a garment. Uh, I'll be talking about how to develop a color story and sharing some different tools that make it easy that if you don't think you have good color sense, you don't have to worry about that. Just find a photo where you like the colors and you can pull a color story from that. And then I will walk through many methods of incorporating multiple fabrics into one garment. And it doesn't just have to be fabrics. It could be fabric with knitting, uh, woven fabric with knitting, uh, woven and commercial fabrics. Uh, so anyhow, one example, I have many different ways that you can do this. One is by just simply by pattern piece. So you just change which fabric you use for which fabric piece can also alternate left to right or front to back. Um, you can have more challenge or thought where you might create a piece of fabric that's pieced prior to cutting out the garment. Uh, uh, and so I'll be also talking about piecing as you go. So this is uh, a top I created, piecing as I went along, more or less fitting to a template. And then of course, we'll talk about how do you divide the space aesthetically Again, by pattern piece, even splits, and there's others, you know, I'll get into a whole list of them. I have lots of images for this lecture. And then a little on planning proportions, maybe using the rule of thirds and other 
um, proven proportional techniques that always seem to have that nice division of space. So I'll also talk a little bit about prototyping and planning your layouts, whether you make a little mock-up before you actually get big, because that can help you plan those um, relationships of fabrics, but also the proportions. And that's, that's a little teaser for what this lecture is about. It's lots of imagery and lots of ideas. Oh, it, it just gets the creative juices flowing. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm excited looking at these patterns. I also like that you're talking about the sustainability, that you don't have to throw away all the, the scraps and small pieces. This sounds great. Thank you, It'll Susan. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Sustainable and creative garments with a pieced approach. It's a 90-minute seminar. It is Thursday afternoon on July the 11th. Kathy Monahan, a passion for plain weave. This is a 90 minute seminar, Saturday afternoon, July the 13th. Hi, Kathy. Hey, nice to see you guys again. Um, I'm excited to talk to you all about my one of my passions, which um, it's kind of funny. I have a passion for something super simple. But um, yeah, so we'll be talking about, and I will be giving you permission to weave plain weave. So. Um, my background is I have spent a um, good part of my early career as an elementary art specialist. So I dealt with all kinds of students, different ages from K-12, but also older. I taught community college as well. And I taught art. So we talked a lot about elements and principles of design. In addition, I have about more than 30 years of teaching weaving and being a weaver myself. And what I found over those years is that I really gravitate towards plain weave. I have an eight harness loom and often I weave plain weave. And, and over and over again, I find that I actually aesthetically react to a very simple structure. It can be absolutely dead simple and it still evokes an emotion for me and uh, a couple years ago um my husband who's also an artist we have started participating in something called um the 100 day challenge and that's where you post to instagram on one topic every day for 100 days and a few years ago i challenged myself to do 100 days of plain weave so what i did every day was put on a new warp, often on a very simple loom, and create something to share. What I found was that I never got bored. Um, and it just provoked more and more um, ideas. And um, it, it just fueled that, that um, passion, actually. So for me, uh, who is this for? Well, anybody interested in learning about, more about the vast possibilities of plain weave? Many, many, many new weavers are entering our community um, with rigid heddle, frame looms, pin looms, or two harness loom. So if you're one of those folks and you're limited to uh, a plain weave structure, that's great. Also, you know, I'm a person who loves that rhythm of just weaving plain weave. I also love to knit stockinette on circulars, so I don't even purl. I just love that repetition. I love spinning the same weight yarn over and over and over again. So um, if you're that person who loves falling into the rhythm, that's you may actually want to look into plain weave as, as, a, as, a, as a default for yourself. Also, there's lots of people who love plain weave, but they're looking for validation. Yes, you're allowed to weave plain weave, even though you have a multiple harness loom. And then one of the other things that we're laying in here is also talking about the elements and principles of design and how they impact your weaving practice. Um, we're gonna you know, talk about why you choose plain weave, what are the strengths and the limits, um, choices. So what's your material? What's your color? What's your set? Are you going for a balanced weave or are you gonna have warp or weft dominant? We'll talk about those things. We'll talk about basically a, an introduction to elements and principles of art. And then we'll look at lots of samples. I think the best definition for me is the uh, definition of good design is unity with variety. How do we do that? I want you to, to like think about focusing your design. You can't do everything in one piece. Lots of times you have this tyranny of choice. It's like, I have all the yarn in the world. I have, you know, all the colors. What am I going to do? And so if you can start to narrow things, like say, oh, you could only use things from your stash. 
Hmm, what do we do with that? Or you have to do it, um, or you're going to use this one structure. So for instance, color choices, warm and cool. If you're gonna focus on shape, focusing on shape. Um, here are some examples. All of these are plain weave examples. Many, many, many ways to approach plain weave. So focusing on shape in your project, focusing on contrast, maybe the contrast of shiny and matte or dark and light or dark and bright. Also texture. There's tons and tons of variety that we can achieve through plain weave um, with just maybe pulling out one of those art elements to focus on. What do you need to bring? Something to write with. You have a, a materials fee of $5 so that you can uh, to pay for the uh, handbook that uh, you'll have at the end of class. So any questions, happy to answer. I see something in the chat box. Well, I'm impressed because you're right. It, it seems like you can't tell someone I have more than four shafts, but I only like to do plain weave. So good for you. You're in there fighting the good fight. Yes, you all have this permission. This sounds wonderful. Thank you, Kathy. It's called A Passion for Plain Weave. It's a 90-minute seminar. I encourage you, if you're just getting started or you're trying to expand on your weaving, check out this seminar. It's Saturday afternoon on July the 13th. Next up, Angela Schneider. Angela is going to teach Beyond Plain Weave. Pick up stick patterns on the rigid heddle loom. Ooh, this looks good. Hey, Angela. You are muted. There you go. Hi. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for, for having us here. That Kathy's class on plain weave looks fabulous. And I, I am also, also a fan of plain weave and letting using a nice yarn and letting the yarn do the work. But sometimes you want to have structure too. And so this class is really a mini workshop on techniques for getting textures and structures on your rigid heddle looms. We all know rigid heddle looms are really great at plain weave, but if you add a pickup stick, you can manipulate some of your slot threads out of their normal plain weave structure and get floats and that's how you get structure. So this is really, you know, a three hour mini workshop. You come with your rigid head of loom and a couple of pickup sticks and a couple of shuttles. And we'll start out with the basics of how you set the pickup stick in the loom and then how you make a shed with warp floats, how you make a shed with weft floats. And then we'll move on to trying some patterns that use the combinations We'll start out with a single pickup stick and we're going to move on to using multiple pickup sticks to create more complex patterns. Um, sometimes you have to put them in and take them back out again. Sometimes you can leave multiple sticks in at once. Actually, I have some pictures to show you too. Let's get that shared. So I have the wrong... There's the right one. This is the Beyond Plain Weave. So these are a couple of fabrics that are created just by the use of the pickup stick. So we're going to go through you know, some simple structures up at the top. Those are just warp floats, wet floats, and the combination. And then when we add the multiple pickup sticks, we can get these other patterns that are shown here on the screen. Uh, we can do honeycomb. We can do... Uh, waffle weave type, really simple waffle weave type things that give those little window pane boxes. We can do the lattice type structures and some even some simple twills. And we're going to work on techniques like when can you leave multiple sticks in? And then we'll also look at how you do uh, install a heddle rod, which is going to make things even more efficient. If you've got to constantly put a pickup stick in and take it back out, it might be easier to install a heddle rod and save yourself some trouble. Um, if you're going to reuse a shed frequently. So this one is really just about getting those techniques in your hands. And we've got lots of patterns to try out. There's a handout that's got 13 patterns in it right now. I might add more. There's 13 patterns. It's more than we're going to be able to do in the three hours, but you'll have the skills to do all of them and you can play with more of them as you go. So this class is for people that have woven on the rigid head of loom and you can do plain weave um, if, and you want to try doing a little bit more structure. 
you use a rigid head of loom. It only needs to be six inches wide. That's the maximum. I'll have, I'll send out instructions with or beforehand with warping instructions uh, that will let you use whatever yarns and heddle you happen to have. So it'll tell you which size yarns are appropriate with which size heddles. So use what you've got. Um, it's only 48 ends, pretty simple. You bring some weft yarn to weave with and some contrasting yarn so we can try something like the honeycomb that you see there on the screen and then a dowel that we can use as a heddle rod. And the fun thing about this is it's the exact same setup as uh, the morning class beyond plain weave with hand manipulated lace. So rigid heddle weavers, if you'd like to turn it into a one day workshop, you can use one loom, one warp and take both classes and Friday morning for lace and Friday afternoon for the pickup stick patterns. And there is no material fee, but there is a handout with the patterns and color printouts of what those patterns look like when they're woven. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that about the two classes, because that is a great idea that you can you can do one and then the other one with the same loom. But let me clarify, because I don't want people to get scared off by the intermediate. When you say intermediate, you want them to know how to warp that loom and know the basics of weaving on a rigid heddle, right? You need to be able to weave plain with weave, which okay. is upshed, downshed. And yeah. honestly, <laughs> you have to have a friend help you warp the loom. That's okay, because we're not going to be talking about warping. We're just going to be talking about weaving and setting up the pickup sticks. It sounds like a great class for anybody who wants to do the rigid heddle. Thank you so much for letting us know about that, Angela. Beyond Thank you, Kathy. Plain weave, pick up, pets, pick up stick patterns on the rigid heddle loom. It's a three-hour seminar. It's Friday afternoon. And check out the Friday morning class also. Last but not least is Robin Spadey, Marketing 101 for Fiber Artists. It's a three-hour seminar, and it is Sunday afternoon on July 14th. Thank you, Kathy. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk about um, marketing. Um, I'm going to go over and start sharing my screen because as always, I have some slides to share with you um, and get this up and running. But this class is designed for fiber artists, not just weavers, but if you are somebody that thinks, you know what, I think I might want to consider either making money so I can at least pay for my yarn, or I've accumulated so many things um, that I've made, and I'd like to maybe consider um, selling them. Or, especially if you want to go to the extreme end, which is, I think I want to make a living doing this. This is a class, it's a three-hour class on Sunday afternoon, Marketing 101 for Fiber Artists. Now, when you hear about marketing, when you hear about um, selling your work and becoming, you know, involved in professional endeavors, you might see her and think, okay, this is about as clear to me as the fog in front of me. It also may leave you uncomfortable because guess what? We have to do one thing that many of us are uncomfortable doing, including myself, which is talk about money. It is miserable to have to put a dollar amount to what we're making. When we do that, some of us feel like I got to turn into Gordon Gecko, who said in uh, his, the movie Wall Street, which was back in the 80s, which is maybe dating myself, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. You do not have to become Gordon Gecko. Um, but what we want is a fair price for what we're doing. You may have spied other weavers that or fiber artists that are selling their work and doing well. And that led you to contemplate, hmm, maybe that's something that I'd like to do myself. But when you sit here and you go, I, I don't know, I just feel like I'm going to be interrogated by customers that want me to lower my price or make things that I don't want to make. Um, so this may be a class that is for you. You also may be the person that says, I'm going to help my guild um, with marketing for the next guild sale. Um, but even Ilsa might turn to Rick and say, Rick, what do you think we're going to cover in this class? Well, let me tell you. So we're gonna talk about basically what is marketing. This is what the class is about. We're gonna talk a lot about customers because you have to know who your customer is. We're gonna cover the four Ps in marketing, product pricing, placement and promotion. This is about what am I charging? Um, why is 
pricing so difficult? Um, how are you selling it? How do people know about it? But the four P's of marketing um, is not the whole thing. There are other marketing P's. Um, we're going to cover that. Talking about how can you get noticed at minimal cost? You don't have to spend a lot in advertising, but there are things that you can do that are relatively easy and effectual. Um, horizontal vertical markets is something that I really like talking about. This was something I did um, in my previous career as a, a management consultant, uh, uh, director of marketing communications for a high tech company um, about what is your target? What are the trends? Do you know what the trends are? Can you adapt trends into what you're making without feeling like you're compromising yourself? Can you drive a trend? There are untapped and underserved markets. And I am amazed sometimes at those opportunities that are going um Th that are being missed. Um, I, I have galleries, I have all sorts of things that contact me saying, we're looking for this. And I'm like, I don't know who to tell you who to call. But also, um, how can you distinguish yourself apart from other fiber artists? Because some of it looks like a shortcut by, I'm going to emulate somebody that is successful. And either you just help them if you're good at what you do, or you look like a poor imitation if you're not doing well. So this is a way of coming in. We're going to have a lot of dialogue. This isn't just me talking at you and giving you information, but to answer your questions and to hopefully give you that opportunity to um, create a plan for when you leave. Um, there is a materials fee of $3, which is a spiral band handout, which is going to cover a lot of what we're going to be covering and discussing. Um, and this is, again, marketing. 101 for fiber artists on Sunday afternoon. It's a three hour class. And hopefully at the end, you might say, I've um, got the beginning of a great opportunity. So thank you for the opportunity to talk about um, my class on Sunday afternoon at Convergence. It'll be the start of a beautiful relationship, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Um, Marketing 101 for Fiber Artists. It's a three-hour seminar. It is Sunday afternoon, July the 14th. I want to thank all of, all of you all who came on today and talked about your classes. It really makes you just want to sign up for all of them. They're wonderful classes. And there's so much to be offered during Convergence. It's 150 seminars and workshops, everything from 90 Minute. You saw some of those today. Three-hour seminars, one, two, and three-day workshops. I want to remind you to be sure if you're going to take a workshop, it probably will help if you take the CVP, the Convergence Value Package. Um, it will give you a 25% discount on your classes. But just a reminder, we had someone call us the other day about this. You have to um, buy your CVP before you purchase your classes or you don't get the discount. You also need a membership if you want to take a class. So be sure you, you do that also. Um, convergence registrations open. Um, be sure you jump in there and register. You can add classes whenever you want. And if you're still not sure, you can go back and watch these programs um, that are on the Facebook, HGA Facebook page. You can go back, look at them again. Today was a good example. Angela Schneider's class, if you want to look at the one in the morning and take the one in the afternoon, you can go back and look at the presentation that she did or another one by Robin or Kathy. So go back, you can look at them anytime you want and it will help you decide which class you would like to take. Convergence it is this July, hard to believe, 11th through the 17th. We're gonna be in Wichita, Kansas. We hope you'll come and join us there. Thank you all so much and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>